And welcome back to Mindset Monday. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast-to-coast -coast mindset coach from Wrestling Mindset, bringing you the best available wrestling-specific information anywhere in the world, Wrestling Mindset. And our topic of the night is how to win a national championship, the route to a national championship. This week is where it all culminates, the NCAA tournament in St. Louis, Missouri, and Wrestling Mindset will be over there with the, with um all this great information. We'll be we'll have presenters over there. It's going to be a great thing at the national tournament. So make sure you stop over there at our booth. We have many wrestlers that are coming that are um mindset coaches, wrestlers from Penn, wrestlers from Cornell, and many other people on our team on our Wrestling Mindset team. So the route to an NCAA championship. Hold on, I don't like the lighting on this. The lighting is funny in this room. I don't know what's wrong, but okay, we're just going to keep going. You can still see the plaques and the trophies on the wall. All right, there we go. So here it is, the route to a national championship. This past weekend, we just had an unbelievable event occur. One of our teams, Limestone, Limestone College in South Carolina, they had an NCAA Division II national champion, DeAndre Johnson. And what I wanted to do, if you haven't seen our Wrestling Mindset uh, Facebook page, or if you haven't seen us, I want you to watch it right now on here. This is the interview with DeAndre Johnson. We talk about constantly the importance of going through our mindset, um, our mindset principles before every practice, and we remember what they are. I'm thankful for the opportunity to wrestle. I'm aggressive and relentless. I have no fear of losing or making mistakes, and I never, ever give up. Right? Well, listen to the NCAA champ. This is right after the match. Our man is still in a single. DeAndre Johnson came in eighth seed, knocked off the first seed, uh, the fourth seed, the second seed, went through everyone. And why? Because his mind was right. Listen in on this interview how great this is. I'm going to blow up the screen for you. And you're going to watch it right here. So if you haven't already seen this on our Wrestling Mindset page, here it is. DeAndre Johnson from Limestone College. Everybody picked uh, Cody Law, that's what we call it, to make the finals at uh, your weight class. Um, you were certainly under the radar coming in. Just talk about the last couple of days and how amazing it's been for you. Oh, man, the last couple of days. This it's been actually the last couple of years or months or whatever. It's a process. It's the whole life. And stuff like that with my teammates and stuff. And uh, I've been doing a lot of mindset training. And, uh, mindset you know, it's, training. It's helped me not worry about, like, who's ranked where, what their records are and stuff like Pray that. Pray mindset. Stuff, so we're, we're, we're Pray mindset. Blood. We breathe the same air and stuff like that. And uh, He's a predator. I just came out there determined because I really wanted to win it. And that was one of my biggest goals ever. And uh, it's my last go-round. I'm a senior. So uh, I figured that I... Uh, I should just do what I can. And I was always thinking for the last few weeks, days and stuff, I was thinking, why not me? You know, why not? Why can't why I not? be one to win the national You tell our guys all the time, why not you? Uh, come close to some type of accomplishment and I, you know, failed many times. I failed a whole lot. Part of the process. That right there, it just, it just, it just helped me realize how much I didn't want to fail anymore and stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. wrestling mindset, we've been doing that a lot. And, uh, be, not being afraid to fail and make mistakes and stuff like that was one of the main things. That I have we no fear of losing or making mistakes. And, we uh, recite every day before and after practice. The team bought in. The team bought into the plan. They were doing the things we told them. If we say it once, we say it 46 times. You have to do what we're saying. Uh, they always tell us to trust the process. And trust I finally got my mind right and started trusting the process. Everything fell into place, man. Finally got his mind right, trusting in the process, and everything fell into place. And that's why we have a national champion, DeAndre Johnson. Now, is it physical hard work? Yes. Is it his nutrition? Yes. Is it his lifestyle? Yes. Is it his mindset? Yes. So the answer is D, my favorite answer on a multiple choice test. All of the above. It's doing all these little things right. If you heard him in the interview, when, you know, maybe I was talking over it a little bit, I get excited. But he mentioned it explicitly. He said, wrestling mindset. We've been doing it a lot. And if we tell you once, we say it 46 times, we say you can't just listen to us, you have to do the things that we're telling you to do. And one of the things we tell the team to do is to go through the mindset principles before and after every single practice. Well, look, Limestone College, as well as many other, many other colleges and high schools and, and uh, middle schools, elementary schools around the nation, the Olympic teams, they're doing it. Before and after every single mindset work, workshop and, every, and before every single and after every workout, they're going through the mindset principles. They're doing the things we tell them. They're not just they're not just thinking about it. They're actually doing the mindset training. And that's the important thing. It's not just about talk. It's about walking the walk and going through this. Let's let's dim this light a tad. All right. So making sure we remember that 
You have to do the things that we're saying. It can't just be it can't just be lip service going in one ear and out the other. As we said to many of our coaches that you know, if you're just listening to us, that's down there in the toilet. As far as average retention rates, you're only going to remember about 5% of the things that you hear when you're listening at a lecture. So as far as I'm concerned, you're not mindset training if you're just listening to me. You have to go through our mindset worksheets, our mindset exercises, and we give our wrestlers things they should be doing every single day. Doing the three affirmations in the mirror out loud. Calling the success hotline. Making sure they, they, they know who they are. Making sure they're taking time to improve themselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally. It's a 365-day-a-year uh, process. It's getting 1% better every single day to the point where your opponents eventually cannot keep up with you. If you keep doing things right, your opponents aren't going to be able to keep up. So let's make sure we do that. Again, we're proud of DeAndre Johnson, NCAA champion. We have Division I Nationals coming up this week. A lot of our wrestlers from around the country going out there, going for gold. And we know that anyone can be beat. Seedings, uh, records, rankings, predictions, that means nothing. We just saw Spencer Lee, the number one wrestler in the country, go down uh, pound for pound. The number one high school wrestler in the country lost in the state finals. His only loss in his high school career on the state finals. And that's certainly not a put down on him. In fact, hats off to him for going out there when he was in a difficult situation. I mean, clearly his knee wasn't up to par. Um, he put it on the line. And that's why Spencer Lee is who Spencer Lee is. You know, this is not a, this is not a hating on, on him or anyone else. Anyone can be beat. Nobody has an S on their chest. And, and it hats off to him. That's going to serve Spencer Lee well in the future, going out there and wrestling, even though you know he didn't have to. He had, nothing, he had nothing more to prove. But even though it was tough, he still got out there. He still wrestled. And, hey, close match, he is a champion. You know, and so is his opponent a champion, uh, putting it on the line. We saw he's like the, the real life vision quest. He lost and he lost 15 nothing last year to Spencer Lee in the state finals. And he and he wanted to he wanted a piece of him. Now he didn't win a state title before this. So what does that show you? The state title wasn't wasn't the end all be all for him. He also had um higher goals. Like he didn't just go up in the higher weight. He wanted to beat Spencer Lee to win a state title. So hats off to him to being focused. So who is the predator? Spencer Lee or DeSanto? The answer is both of them. Again, all the above. Both of them are champions because both of them are willing to put it on the line. And and that's why we want to see more and more of that. So make sure you're watching the NCAA championship this week. Make sure you're watching any opportunity you have to watch these championships. It's a great thing. And like we tell all of our wrestlers, if you go to the NCAA tournament, if you go to a state tournament to watch, don't just go there as a spectator. Mentally go in there with the mentality, okay, that's going to be me warming up. This is where I'm going to, so this is going to be me next year or in a few years. Put yourself in the arena. See where you're going to be doing your pre-match routine, which we go through all of our wrestlers with Self-Knowledge Week 5. See yourself, where am I going to go through my pre-match routine? Okay, I'm taking in the crowd. Okay, this is how I'm going to feel when I'm out there, out there on the mat. Because what happens is we see with wrestlers all the time, they get to their first state tournament, they get to their first NCAA tournament, their eyes are as wide as saucers. They're like, deers in the, they're like deer in the headlights because they weren't mentally and emotionally prepared for what was about to take place. Well, get that out of your system now at a time where you're maybe not competing. And the best story I could give you is uh, my brother Greg, when he was, um, so my brother Jeff, so th the way, it, the order in our family, it's it's me, and then two years, and then Jeff, and then four years, and then Greg. So Jeff was at the States, his junior or senior year of high school, it was probably his senior year, so it was 2004. Greg wasn't even going to be in high school until, uh, Greg wasn't going to be in high school until the next year. And eventually, he wouldn't have made the States until his senior year of high school. Obviously, we didn't know that going in, but I remember when Jeff was in the state tournament, I brought Greg in the I brought brought Greg down into the into the warm up area. So he came down with me. We we got him a guest pass. He came down. He saw where the wrestlers were warming up. He saw where um the wrestlers were sitting. He watched all the competitors pace around. And and I remember like I wanted to put him mentally there. So when it was his turn to go down there, it wasn't his first time. He wasn't a deer in the headlights. Now even at that time, I still wasn't the mindset coach that I am right now. Um, that was still relatively early in my mindset coaching career. But um, at least I was doing something right, thinking that far in advance, right? Well, now I fast forward time until when Greg was at the States as a senior. Didn't qualify until the States until his senior year. Um, not because he wasn't good enough. Again, like many wrestlers out there, loaded weight classes, especially his junior, his junior year and his senior year. So it was, it was very tough to get down there. Um, and that's why we say the outcome isn't the end-all, be-all. We know there's a lot of wrestlers who go home early that, that are just as good as state place winners or even state champions. And we see that in college, too. Many of the best college wrestlers, 
uh, you know, they go home before the NCAA tournament, and maybe they were capable of being All-Americans or national champs. Again, anyone can be beat. We see a lot of backups in college, people who aren't even on the varsity lineup that are good enough to be at the NCAA tournament. We see in high school that um, some guys are good enough to make the state tournament, but they, they're not even varsity. So we don't go by just by the outcome. But I digress. Back to Greg. So years later, about three or four years later, Greg's in the States as a senior. Um, his first experience at the state tournament, and I was down there with him, you know, trying to be, you know, the big, the, the oldest brother taking responsibility, trying to be down there for my, for my little brothers. And while I was down there, Greg told me after he won his quarterfinals match to, to or his quarters or semis match, he said to me, you know, this wasn't the first time that I, that I was down here in this area. I, and I, I forgot at the point he was reminding me and I was like, oh, really? And he said, yeah, he said, you brought me here when Jeff was competing. And at that point, it hit me. Uh, maybe I didn't remember exactly, but I remembered what my reasoning would have been for bringing him down there. And Greg's, and and I, and so I remembered. And I said, "Hey, Greg, I was like, why do you think I brought you down here when Jeff was competing at the states? I knew what my thought process probably was, and I was on point." And Greg said, "So I knew that I was here before." And Greg said, "So he knew that when he got out there in Atlantic City, he was there before." And, you know, so men, that's why I brought him down there when Jeff was competing, so he wouldn't be there as a spectator. Greg wasn't competing. He wasn't even in high school when Jeff was a senior. But I wanted him to approach it not as a spectator just sitting in the crowd, but get down there ground level. And um, so it, it's true. Even though it was his first experience at the state tournament where he was an actual participant, mentally he was already a participant. And, and it worked well for him. I mean, he wound up being a state, a state finalist his senior year. Wound up losing in the state finals. But I remember him saying after the match, he said, you know, I felt really good before the match. And he said he didn't, he didn't feel nervous. He felt very confident. You know, he just came up short. And I remember telling him after that, hey, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, not a lot of people, there's a lot of people, they get into the biggest match of their life. And I mean, at this point in time, this was the biggest match of Greg's career. And for him to actually say, I felt really good. I felt confident. I didn't feel nervous. That's great. So keep doing the things you were doing. So it's it's, it's all mental training. It's all about getting our mind right, just like our just like our NCAA champ uh, DeAndre Johnson from Limestone College. Uh, real proud of him, and we're proud of all of our wrestlers. And it's not just about the the wrestling accolades. You know, we get you wouldn't believe the the beautiful message we messages we get from the wrestlers, the parents. Not just about wrestling, but you know how they've been improving in school. They're more confident socially. Um, spiritually, they're getting deeper in their faith. And of, and of course, wrestling, I mean, wrestling, the program's geared towards wrestling. So that's a given you're doing wrestling mindset. You're going to become a, a better wrestler. That's not, there, there's no question about that, but it's when we see them improving also academically, their social lives in their faith. That's where you really see that, Hey, this is, this is really our calling. And this is really what we want to be doing. And this is our, this is our piece of how we, how we change the world using wrestling as a vehicle to, to improve our lives. So Again, that getting ready for the national tournament, let this be a metaphor for our whole life, our mindset training, the way we attack our goals, the way we prepare for everything, right? Putting ourselves mentally in the situation before we get there. So when we step out there, it's not our first time experiencing it. That visualization is so important. Many wrestlers, many athletes, many successful people, you know, they, they, they live by it, that, that visualization. So put yourself there in your goals before you actually get there and then it won't be a surprise you won't be the person who goes into the job interview like a deer in the headlights you won't be um you know in the, in the situation that 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 separates you from your goal and, and and we don't choke under the under the limelight we don't we don't you know underperform so wrestling mindset make sure you stay with us we're going to constantly keep pumping this great information your way remember this they all can be beat Something my dad said a while ago to me, he said, in, the, or in my brothers, he said, 1972, uh, interviewing Frank Gifford, interviewing Ben Peterson in the Olympics, and he said there was a feeling in Munich that if Dan Gable wasn't on the American team, there'd be no gold medals. And we know Wayne Wells and Ben Peterson, they also won gold medals. And Ben Peterson said to, said to Frank Gifford, the announcer, he said, they all can be beat. And that was something we always... Um, it's something we always grew up we, uh, knowing, something we lived by. Remember, no one's got an S on their chest. Anyone can be beat. Why not you? All right. So we'll keep you posted what we're doing with Wrestling Mindset. Now that the season's going to be over, we might make a, a few switches with our, with our programming. Um, make sure you stay with us all the time. We'll keep you posted. Make sure you're following our emails. Subscribe to our newsletter. You do that on our website, www.wrestlingmindset.com. Now is the best time for you to start your mindset training. 
it's fresh. All the information from the season is fresh in your mind. If you wind up starting in, in August, you're going to forget all this, all the times that you had pressure and, and all the times that, um, you know, you may be choked under the, under the spotlight. You're going to forget exactly what you were thinking and what you were feeling. If you, if you join the program right now, all of our mindset coaches are trained to be able to help you with these exact situations. So you know what you were struggling with and we get to the bottom of it and we fix the problem. Remember the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We're gonna make a change. We're not content, we wanna move forward, we wanna get better. There's a rule in life that says we're either growing or we're dying. So is a wrestler, so is a team, so is a business, so is a flower. And has everything to do with am I content where I'm at or do I wanna get better? We wanna get better and that's by taking a hard and smart approach to the sport of wrestling. Let's make sure we get our minds right. We'll see you next week. Wrestling Mindset. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast-to-coast -coast mindset coach for Mindset Monday. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.